Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf Quest 3, the tale of the twin moons, the showcase edition. So it's finally time, my friends. We have completed generation two with Achilles and his mate Persephone being the dawn moon pack, and with Parsley and her mate Azor being the dark moon pack. And with that completion, that means that it is time to look over all 12, 12 of our survivors surviving puppies, learn a little bit more about them, see what they would actually look like if they were grown up, learn what their traits might be, and uh, learn a little bit about what their lifetime quest, those special role play story events that we create, would be if we chose those wolf pups to be the heir. So here's where we're currently at, friends. I think we are indeed going to have another round of both the Dawn Moon and the Dark Moon packs. I'm extremely excited about that because I've really loved running them side by side. It's helped me not get burned out on working with our wolves to be able to jump between two packs. I was really worried that maybe it would be hard to keep going with our daily Wolf Quest adventures when we have already done them since the moment that Wolf Quest 3 came out more with the pups. Like, boom, we were on it. So it's been months now, an entire season has passed since we have followed the very beginning adventures with Meadow all the way here to the beginning of Generation 3. However, thanks to your guys' amazing support, your excitement in the comments, the way that you guys talk together every day, how some of you you'd like start getting really excited to meet each other in the comments. I've seen several of you look forward to seeing one another and hanging out every day that we have these adventures. And thanks to your immense and wonderful support, we're going to keep it going for at least another generation. It's really hard for me to do a daily series because it takes a lot out of you to like focus on that thing on and on and on for weeks on end. However, generation three, as far as I feel, is going to go ahead and we're going to do it again. We're going to have the dawn moon and we're going to have the dark moon and we're going to see how these cousins do running side by side. And if we keep that up, we'll be entirely dependent on your guys like watching those videos and leaving likes and all of your comments. And we'll see what we decide to do for generation four. If we want to just pick one wolf to focus on or keep up this dual wolf program, it's really fun to be able to see how their stories start the same and then veer into so many different directions let me know what you guys think in the comments but that's kind of what i'm thinking we're going to do for now and here's another twist friends i am going to show you all of the wolves that we currently have we're going to look at all of the pups i have spent quite a bit of time writing up a personality using a random generator as well as the personalities that they displayed while we were playing with them i have chosen a lifetime quest for each and every one of the pups and we're going to look at all of the dawn moon pack today and i am going to let you guys go ahead and let me know who you you think should be the heir to the dawn moon pack but I think this time around I might be the one to actually pick who the heir will be and I'm going to do that because the dawn moon pack in particular has the white wolf Jalon you guys know all about Jalon you guys have seen him here we'll go ahead and we'll go look at him over in the family tree so you guys know all about Jalan. He is the only white wolf that we have had so far in the pack. And I know that that has led to a lot of back and forth on, oh, you only like him because he's a white wolf or not. Well, I'm going to be the one to possibly pick who's gonna be heir to these two packs this time but i'm going to take all of your guys feedback on who you would like and we'll have a poll oh there's too many puppies to have a big poll with actually so we're gonna have a poll by you guys leaving comments and then i will look through the comments and calculate how many of you say the different pups names and between those two forces we'll come up with who's going to become heir however we're not going to take some of these other pups off the list. We're also going to potentially play with them in the future. So their story, their lifetime quest, their personalities are still going to be important. And if I'm able to make it happen, guys, I'm going to make it so that you guys can actually play with these pups. I'm going to see if there's a way where I can go ahead and save them as wolves and then take those save files and share them with you. Kind of like how we used to do that with our niche tribes. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that just yet, but it is something I'm going to actively look into. So I wanted to let you guys know that that way you'll be introduced to all of the puppies and all of their personalities. And if you had a favorite and I don't end up choosing that favorite to be heir, you can actually take their story into your own hands and you would actually be able to hopefully, fingers crossed, if I can pull this off somehow, get the file, play as that wolf. It might be able to happen. I'm not 100% sure if we can make that happen, but it might be able to happen. And then you could go ahead and you could give them the life and the story that you really feel they deserve. And you could tell us all about how like your adventures, say if we don't pick Artemis, how your adventures with Artemis go. And if you are able to complete her lifetime quest. So that's what we're gonna do guys. I'm really, 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 really excited about this. So, okay. This time, this episode, we're going to go ahead and introduce all of Achilles and Persephone's pups, and uh, we'll reintroduce you guys to the family tree. My hope is that we'll be able to do 10 generations of these wolves, so if you guys could help support me, I'm going to need your support on getting that far in, because I won't be able to keep going that far without you guys watching and like cheering me on, because that's a lot of wolf pups to take care of, oh my gosh. But we started with our beautiful Meadow. She met a Genesis, who was quite the wonderful mate for her. And then one of their mini pups, if we come over here, you can actually see all of her relations. We had Arrow, Parsley, Calypso, Achilles, Daisy, who died, Bluebell, who died, and Marigold, who died, which was really hard. So we only ended up with four surviving pups. We've come a long way since then. And now, we have got Achilles and Persephone. So Perfe Persephone has negative two stamina, one strength and one health, which might explain why she was always behind us when we were running around the place. And they had seven puppies make it to adulthood. So starting with the very first one, here is Hades. Negative one stamina plus one is speed. And let's see what he looks like. Mm. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see what he looks like as an adult. <gasps> Look at him! Oh my gosh! Whew, there we go. Sorry about that. The game had a little bit of a hiccup trying to load him in. Look at that stripe down the front of his face. I love that so much. Hades! He looks awesome, you guys. He's got a little bit of a dark tail. And then he's also got that dark stripe down his face. I like it very, very much. And he is actually the largest of the pups from Achilles and Persephone's litter. He, however, even though he was the largest, he was outnumbered. So he got pushed around a lot when he was the, like in the den and got shoved out of the den for being like take, the one taking up all the room by his other six siblings, just because he was outnumbered quite a bit. And he's very brave due to his size, but he's also very stubborn and does not like to change his opinion. So when he picks a den, he doesn't want to have to move from that den until he is absolutely driven out. And he also can be a little bit unkind because he'll put his own comfort before seeing to the needs of others. So if he doesn't have a full stomach, if he's a little tired, he may not be very likely to go out and do a lot of hunting, but that comes from always having to get out of the way when he was a pup, when all the other pups have space too. So he just tries to look after after himself. He doesn't mean to be super unkind. And actually, if he manages to find a five star mate, I have a feeling that they will absolutely transform his life and actually make him realize how sacrificing for your family is a really great thing. So he's he's got the potential to really lose that little bit of unkindness that he rolled as his negative trait. All of them got two positive traits, one negative trait. Let's go ahead and we're actually going to look at our next one. Oh, that's what Hades looked like growing up. That was so cool. And this is Artemis. So she actually has strength one, negative one health. And Artemis was our smallest pup, but only by a little bit compared to the others. And she looks like, whoa, she looks like this, you guys. Wow. 
She kind of reminds me a little bit of some of our earlier wolves. She kind of reminds me of like the original OG Meadow, like our or like our Golden Lily. She kind of reminds me a little bit of Lily for some reason, even though I don't know, it's more her demeanor than her coloring. And she's got a scar on her face. It looks like she had a run in possibly with a cougar or a bear, which is really amazing. Holy cow. And that's also very interesting because one of her traits she actually rolled is cowardly. So Artemis is driven and very exciting. She's got a lot of charisma for her desires. However, she's rather cowardly and often flees from stronger predators or moose or bison, preferring smaller and easier prey, and she tries not to fight with stranger wolves unless she absolutely has to. So I wonder if her cowardly trait actually came from something that happened when she got like sideswiped because I didn't expect these scars on the face. I love the complex mix of of her colors too. That is just so cool. And Artemis's lifetime quest is to explore the Prospect Peak area and push the Prospect Peak wolves out of 50% of their traditional territory so that she can take over the peaks. She's not really wanting to battle with a pack or have a rival pack. She just wants to take over the peaks. And because she is a little cowardly, she probably wouldn't fight with a, another pack. She would just go ahead and try to steal it as gently as she possibly could and enjoy the view. All right, so that's Artemis, our girl Artemis. Let's go ahead and we're actually going to see how Demeter is doing. And Demeter is actually one of our most playful and also one of our most troublesome of our wolves. She was definitely a troublemaker and always loved pulling on everybody else's tail. So let's pop over. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. <gasps> Look at her, you guys. She's so beautiful. What? Oh, Demeter! She looks so different from her siblings, doesn't she? But Demeter actually uh, was very much a troublemaker, and even though she looks so stunning, she's still a little bit of a mischievous troublemaker as an adult wolf, and she loves pulling on tails, even those of her pups and her mate. So she is extremely playful. She'd be the one to like roll around in the den with the pups all of the time. And she's also very generous and kind. So she seeks to make sure that there is an abundance of food provided to her family at all times, and when she tries to provide that abundance of food, it's actually one specific type of food, her favorite food rabbits. So Demeter's special story is that she will always be bringing an abundance of rabbits to the den and she has a lifetime quest of hunting 100 rabbits, which might be too many, might be too few. I don't know. There's a lot of lucky rabbits that we go ahead and haven't even noticed that our wolves just scarf down, but she wants to become the very first wolf in the moon pack to hunt 100 rabbits. So that is actually her special story and trait. And I love how even though she is extremely playful. She looks really serious and very beautiful. And you wouldn't expect her to be the one to like, you know, you turn your back on the serious wolf and you're like, oh wow, she just, she looks so elegant. And then she's gonna bite your tail. So you gotta watch out for her. All right. And then next up is of course, one of the most controversial of all of the wolves that we have had born this litter, Jalan. So Jalan is also extremely mischievous and he's constantly trying to pull tricks and surprise his pack mates. He's got negative one stamina, but he's a little faster. Ooh, I actually think he's the first wolf, no, no, uh, other than Hades. So he and Hades are both both negative one stamina, but they've got a bit of speed. And he is the only white wolf pup that we have had born in the pack yet. So here is what he would look like, you guys. Here is what he would look like. He actually has a much darker pack than I, or dar darker coloration than I was expecting. And it looks like his mischievous ways have actually gotten him into a little bit of trouble before. Look at him. Oh my gosh. He, he has a, such a cute tail. He kind of reminds me a ton of Meadow, to be honest, because Meadow had this sort of coloring. Wow. Wow. So the thing with him is a lot of us have been wondering exactly like how he's, his genetics might play out, like if he might have more white wolf pups or not. His genetic coat color is linked to gray. 
So, ooh, I don't know. Like, that's a good question, you guys. I'm super curious at, like, how his genetics would be. And that does have my eye on my interest. And a lot of you guys want to see him become the heir so that we can follow him for the genetic curiosity of it all. But I am going to go ahead and leave that up to you guys in the comments once you hear through all of their stories. So Jalan, very mischievous, constantly surprising his pack mates with un his unusual plans and directions in life, which also means that he is going to pick territory to take based on his random whims rather than carefully thinking it through. So we might take over a territory spot and then roll a dice and then take over whatever territory spot in whatever direction he decides is a good one next. And he also has the traits of being brave and inspiring. So there's just something about that mischievous glint in his eye that can convince almost anyone to follow his lead. And his lifetime quest is to actually stay at three different dens and three different summer sites to take in the view from multiple places and enjoy the world. And we're not talking about like three dens that just happen to be right next to each other. We're talking about three dens that have magnificent views, three summer sites that have magnificent views. So with Jalan and that mischievous smile, we would be sure to see the world and possibly see some very interesting genetics at play. All right. And then popping on over and checking out the next pup. And keep in mind, hopefully in the future, you guys will have a chance to play with these wolves yourself. But with Alicia here, she has negative one speed. So she's a little slower than some, but she's higher on health, which is really great for her. Let's go ahead and see what she would look like. Oh, <gasps> wow. She doesn't look anything like I was ex What the heck, Alicia? I think she's got like the burn marks, you guys. So Alicia has actually been through a forest fire. What? I didn't expect that out of her. She looks like she's got like soot all over her face too. That's pretty amazing. So Alicia was one of the smaller pups, but she's also one of the fiercest and the most likely to settle arguments with her teeth. She won't put up with a mate wandering off on their own and demands to be obeyed. She's very smart and creative, and she does use those skills to further her goals and to protect the pack. So she's going to make sure that her mate basically is always by her side because she knows best on what we should be doing right now. However, she is very intelligent. She is very creative. She's going to constantly try really hard to make sure that she tackles the goals of her own life quest and also the goals of the moon pack. And her lifetime quest is to stay only at dens that are caves or rocky areas and to stay at a summer hunting ground that keeps the McBride Lake in her territory. So she kind of wants to take over all the rocky areas around McBride Lake. And she'll do it with her fangs if she needs to. Oh, it's so cool to see how different everybody's turning out, you guys. All right. So after Alicia in this gigantic family tree comes Apollo, who actually has strength and health, but not so much speed and or, or stamina, pardon me, and health, but not so much strength and speed. So little Apollo, let's go ahead and see what he would look like. Oh, he's really pretty. What? Oh, he's really, really pretty. He's got a lot of like red coloring up front. And with Apollo, he is a very quiet wolf who rarely offers any insight into what he is thinking. He hardly makes a sound. However, he's extremely reliable and generous and will quietly see to it that his family is taken care of and the legacy of his pack respected. And his lifetime quest is to go through his whole life without a single howl, which is pretty like amazing. So he's just very, very quiet, kind of a wolf of mystery, and he's a lot redder than I was expecting. Oh my goodness. He kind of reminds me of his mom. Wow. All right. So the very final wolf that we have in this family tree is little Circe, who's extremely slow. What the heck? She's negative two on speed, but she's up on strength and up on health. And she looks like, <gasps> she's so golden. And she also has some burn marks on her. So I think, she, wow, she's got a lot of burn marks on her too. So I think that she, or like, well, we could also say that's mange. Hmm, take your pick. But I like the idea that maybe she and Alicia were actually in a forest fire together and had to like fight their way out because they're, they've always been kind of close as sisters, I think. 
But Circe is a very driven wolf who has a passion for the meadows around the rushing riverside. She's very tactical in how she examines the world around her and will go after the best resources, as long as they're near a river. And her lifetime quest is to take over the second meadow area and spend as much time as possible in it for both den and summer, hu summer hunting ground times. Whew. So there we go, you guys. Holy cow. Look at these wolves. Achilles, you did good. So Achilles had Alicia, Apollo, Artemis, Circe, Demeter, Hades, Jalan. Look at all of those pups. Achilles, you did amazing. I really love how his family tree looks, and I really love all of the different stories and all of the different wolves. And now that I actually have a chance to see them all grown up, I'm kind of amazed at how my decisions on who I would probably pick for heir actually have gotten really tossed about a little bit. But I'm going to hold off on my final decision until I see what you guys have to say and until I see what the... Hmm, the heirs of the Dark Moon pack are going to look like too. So all right, you guys, if you could, do please leave a like for all of our amazing wolves making it to adulthood with all of their unique stories. Fingers crossed that I will find some way that we might be able to go ahead and share them with you in the future. And if you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.